We're in Granada, Spain and walking towards the Alhambra. It's quite breathtaking with the enchanting gardens and fountains surrounding us, which are one of the many distinctions of medieval palaces. Actually, a reoccurring theme in the construction across the Muslim dominion are the gardens, water fountains, canals, and pools, and all the qualities are found in the complex. In 1492, Catholic monarchs Ferdinand and Isabella conquered the city of Granada. The, the palace became a Christian court. The plain of the Alhambra is quite complex. That's right, there are 30 towers of various sizes and 1,730 meters of walls that enclose the city within a city. One of the oldest palace structures in the Alhambra complex is the Palacio del Pardo, which was built in the early 14th century. The Portico Palace forms a five-arched arcade at one end of the pool. The Arabic abbreviation of the Alhambra translates to the Red Fort. The palace was built in the Nazareth dynasty between the years 1232 and 1492. In fact, the Nazareth dynasty was the last dynasty for Muslims to rule in Spain. There are three original royal palaces, which include the Comoros Palace, the Palace of the Lions, and the Porto Palace. They were built in the 14th century, and the large fourth palace was constructed by Charles V, a Christian ruler. There is a beautiful and colorful audience chamber called the El Mexuar, which is located near the Camaris Tower at the northern edge of the complex. As you can see, the room is decorated with complex geometric tile depths and carved panels. As we walk behind the El Mexuar, there is an elaborate Camaris facade set back from the courtyard and fountain. It is interesting that the facade was built on a raised three-step platform serving as an outdoor stage for the ruler. It is unfortunate that only traces remain of the once brightly painted and carved stucco facade. Following a passage beyond the Camaras facade leads us to a covered patio. It is absolutely amazing with the large pool in the courtyard, which is known as the Court of Myrtles. There is a sense of calmness and simple beauty. Another location that is eye-catching is within the largest tower. The Camaris Tower holds the throne room, which was built by Yusef I between the years of 1333 and 1354. The room is known as the Salon de Camaris, or also known as the Hall of the Ambassadors. This room contains the most diverse and decorative architectural arts within the Alhambra. This room contains a double arched windows which effectively illuminate the room. The arched grille or lattice windows are set high in the walls which provide additional light into the room. The walls are complex with stunning designs. Yes, you can vividly see at the eye level the lavishly decorated walls with tiles laid in intricate geometric patterns. The other surfaces of the walls are covered with carved stucco motifs. In fact, these motifs are organized in bands and panels of curvy linear patterns and calligraphy. We now journey to the following palace, called the Palace of the Lions. The Court of the Lions, with its adjoining side rooms and upper galleries, was the most innermost and most private courtyard of the palace when the region was under Islamic rule. Muhammad V built the most celebrated feature, the fountain, in the Palace of the Lions. The fountain is astounding within the complex hydraulic system, which consists of a marble basin on the backs of 12 carved stone lions. It is situated in, at the intersection of two water channels that forms a cross in the rectilinear courtyard. There are two pavilions on the east and west axes of the courtyard. It's fascinating that the name comes from the intricately carved system of brackets called macarons, which support the vaulted ceiling. Okay, so now we walked across the courtyard to the east side, which is called the Sala de los Reyes, or also known as the Hall of the Kings. The Hall of the Two Sisters and the Hall of the Ambassadors were used as residential apartments with rooms on the second floor as well. Most, Like most Islamic architecture, the decorations feature geometric, floral, and vegetal patterns. And they are lavishly decorated with carved and painted stucco and macarnus forms, or sometimes called a honeycomb vault. Islamic architecture is meant to invoke imagery of oasis pools in the Arabian desert. That is true. It is very interesting that the filigree macarna arches above small fountains are meant to represent palm trees that allow light to pass through them, which creates water-like patterns. The use of the light is also dominant within the architecture because of the Makarna dome with over 5,000 cells allows light into the room through 16 lattice windows at the base.